Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Police have completed the initial investigation into a body found at a downtown Sioux Falls Park. At this point, the death does not appear to be suspicious. Authorities were called to Faywick Park early yesterday afternoon. When they got there, they found the body of a 58-year-old man near the river. He is believed to be homeless. At this point, the cause of his death remains unknown. Officials are waiting on autopsy results. We have an update on the two-vehicle crash that left two people dead near Plankinton. On Saturday, May 13th, a Ford Crown Victoria was traveling on Interstate 90 when it collided head-on with a semi-tractor-trailer combination late in the evening. Reports say Owen Robert Jerdall was the driver of the Crown Victoria and Jeffrey Dwayne McGee Jr., 29 years old, was the passenger. Both Jerdall and McGee were pronounced dead at the scene. Francisco Pada Navarro, 63, of Sioux Falls, was the driver of the semi-truck. He was not injured. Investigators in St. Paul, Minnesota, are looking for clues at a mosque because they think someone set it on fire intentionally. Fire crews first arrived to a mosque at 8.30 in the morning on Wednesday. The building had been undergoing renovations, so no one was inside and no one was hurt. This is the sixth suspected attack on a mosque this year in Minnesota. It's the second in two weeks in St. Paul. Police officials are saying they will increase patrols at mosques across the city. Detectives were still combing through debris later in the afternoon. It's been a smoky start to the day across much of our viewing area. Right now, conditions appear to be the worst in northwestern South Dakota and in the eastern part of the state. This is what it looks like in Sioux Falls, where smoke from the Canadian wildfires is reducing visibility and making air quality unhealthy. Local medical experts say people with underlying conditions like asthma, COPD, and heart disease need to take precautions. Some school districts are already canceling after-school activities like track to keep students and coaches safe. Turning now to a first look at our midday forecast, we look up and we see that smoke. So how long do you think it'll be up there and kind of a big part of our ongoing story? Well, it'll probably continue for the next several days. Conditions will slowly improve. I think as the winds pick up, we mix up the atmosphere a little bit. But to really see a difference, we need to change the whole pattern. And I really don't see that happening until next week when the upper level winds start to come in from the southwest instead of the northwest, which is what we have right now. Temperature in Aberdeen, I know it's listed as fog, but we do have smoke or haze in the air. And that temperature is at 64 degrees, able to bring in at least filtered sunshine, would like to say that. Temperature at 62 in Rapid City. We have that west wind coming in around oh, 10 miles per hour. Now, as we continue to watch the fire and smoke across the area, we'll also have to watch our temperatures as sometimes it really plays a number with how warm we actually get across Kettle and may shave off at least a couple of degrees. This is Watertown and we are looking at temperatures in the middle 60s right now. The visibility due to the smoke is down to two miles and again in Rapid City. That's a better look at the live cam able to show the smoke across western South Dakota. One more stop Sioux Falls smoky skies able to bring in some filtered sunshine. It's warm temperature at 71 northwest wind at 10 miles per hour. Satellite and radar showing the cold front to our east. You know, we had a couple of very light rain showers in eastern and southeastern Kettle Land earlier this morning. Right now we are looking at dry skies, but again, the visibility in many locations down to two miles or less. Over the next 12 hours on Futurecast, we may develop an isolated shower or thunder shower across northeastern South Dakota. It's in there at maybe 20% to see. Otherwise, temperatures today probably in the 70s for afternoon highs. That will happen with our smoky or hazy conditions in Sioux Falls. Aberdeen and northeastern South Dakota showing temperatures hitting the lower 70s today. Mostly clear to partly cloudy during the overnight. There may be that isolated shower, thunder shower chance, I would say, after 5 o'clock. In central South Dakota, temperatures will hit the mid-70s today, eventually falling to the middle 40s for overnight lows. And western South Dakota, we are looking at temperatures to stay in the middle, maybe the upper 60s today, falling close to 40 for an overnight low tonight. Megan will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Tonight, we continue to look back on the stories that shaped Kelloland. Local politics were big news in the early 2000s. To those this evening who voted across South Dakota for me, I say thank you. I am honored by your support, and I will work very, very hard to be deserving of your vote. In 2004, Republican John Thune won top 
Democrat Tom Daschle's seat in the U.S. Senate with just 50.6 percent of the vote. From politics to the aftermath of the September 11th terror attacks, we'll take a look back at the biggest stories of the 2000s tonight at 10. You also want to join us this weekend for our anniversary special, Kell Land, Your Home for 70 Years. It will air on Keller TV on Saturday, May 20th at 7 o'clock Central Time. Rideshare giant Uber has announced several updates and new features, including rides that will allow teens under the age of 18 to travel by themselves for the first time. The company says parents can create the accounts for their teens to help them get to sports practices and other activities. The rides will include live tracking, an audio recording feature, and an option for parents to contact the driver directly to monitor a trip's progress. The teen accounts will be available in select cities in the U.S. and Canada starting on May 22nd. Negotiations continue on a plan that would raise the debt ceiling, but still be able to pass both chambers of Congress. But a sticking point in the talks could be emerging. Nicole D'Antonio has details from Capitol Hill. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says negotiations over the debt ceiling are progressing. We've got to get it done, so we're going to work until we can get it done. But House Republicans insist on including stricter work requirements for Medicaid and food stamp recipients. It's not right to take your tax dollars and pay somebody to stay at home. We've got jobs opening, so if that's one of the things he's, he's calling out, no deal. But many Democrats say the Republican plan goes too far. They have blown up the deficit time and time and time again. And now what they want to do is cut programs for ordinary people to fund bigger tax cuts for the rich. Uh, it's abominable. Prior to leaving for Japan, President Biden hinted that he may be open to some changes. I voted years ago for the work requirements that exist. But it's possible there could be a few others, but not anything of any consequence. Some Senate Democrats are drafting a letter to President Biden asking him to cut off the negotiations and just pay the debt without congressional approval. The letter says we write to urgently request that you prepare to exercise your authority under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which clearly states the validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. Mandates uh, that the United States pays their bills. There's nothing in there about a debt ceiling. There's nothing in there about anything else. It just says pay your bills. Biden has said he's considering the 14th Amendment, but says it wouldn't help the current debt crisis. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Biden also acknowledged that invoking the 14th Amendment would trigger a massive legal fight and could do some economic harm as well.